introduce our guests, I would like everyone watching any part of this world that you're watching, you want to connect with us through the Facebook. Dove Televisions on Facebook, had us will confirm you as a friend. Um, like us on Facebook, yes, be Dove Television family on Facebook. Get to watch exciting, interesting, glorious program on our YouTube page. A click button there and get to watch our live program all the way from Dove Television. We have a guest here with us in the house. He has been part of Healthy Living and also part of Dove Television's family. We're here to introduce Pastor Simindu Steven. He's the head of Environmental Health Unit on the Camp Maintenance Department in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. We're glad to have him on this platform. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you, Thank sir. You. God bless you. Before we look into today's topic, which is interesting, we would like Pastor Sim, uh, Simindo Stephen to please lead us in a short prayer. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you for your love again. Thank you, Lord. Your love woke us up today. Your love gave us life. Father, as we examine even incidences around us and to take necessary preactive measure, O oh God, we pray, O oh God, that you enlighten us this morning in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. You guide us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end, O oh God, we we'll return all the glory to you. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Lord. Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Amen. And um, thank God. <laughs> all right. Today seems to be interesting, quite interesting. A lot of times we complain of um, early this morning, someone said to me, I actually bought a fish, a smoked fish and hoping to use it to cook vegetable for my children. But I find out that by the time I got to where I kept this fish, something has taken this fish away from the kitchen. And I begin to ask myself this question, who must have done this? Do I have a spirit living in the house with us? Well, the answer is not far, far, uh, uh, far uh, to us there. And uh, we keep talking about this every day. These are things that move around the house and we wonder, ah, I, I'm just looking for a way to keep this rat. I'm just looking for a way to, you know, just to get this rat out of my home. No matter how big, no matter how small the house is, we find that these things are always around the house. Either they are ca causing damages to the food we have at home or the electrical equipment we must have kept, you know, in our house. Well, looking at the topic, implications of rodent infestation. What are rodent infestation? What are the implications? What are the damages they must have caused in our home? Pastor Simindo Steven is here to tell us how do we, um, uh, how do we take care of this? Uh, should I say, uh, I won't call them pets. Are they pets? They are not pets. <laughs> they are pests. They are pests. Yes, they are not pets, but they are pests. What can we do to eradicate this in our environment, in our home? What are the prevention? What are the risk factors when it comes to our health? First, let us define what um, rodent infestation is. Uh, uh, that's wonderful. Number one, we, we need to know this enemy uh, is a major enemy of economic uh, public health importance. You know, that gather the old specialists mm. in time of re related to public health to take necessary pre precautionary measure in place. WHO divine rodents or rats as a pest of major economic importance and pests are unwanted animals, mm. enemies of man in an environment. Mm. And these unwanted animals want to survive so he needs other higher animal as mama, human being, mm. you know, food remnants, you know, habitat to survive. So pests or rodents as an enemy of man live around where human being lives. Live around where food is being made available for them. Live around where, you know, lack of adequate good sanitation is being practiced. Mm. So you see all this enemy of man that is called pest of uh, public health importance mm. around. And this rodent that we're talking about, we have various species of them. Mm. 
and each species has one disease, you know, they harbor mm. in their body mechanism. Mm. Mm. I get that. And these oh. are what you're going to look at. Okay, now. Looking at what you've explained to us, a lot of us now will understand that we're looking at the topic, we're talking about rats. Mm. Whether it is small, it is big, it's all about them, mm. this um, healthy living here on this planet. And these are the reasons why we decide to pick this topic. That um, a lot of times we tend to neglect our environments. A lot of times we tend to neglect the little jets you see around you. You feel this can cause any harm. Mm. Not, not uh, looking at the consequence. If it doesn't cause damage to your body, there are children around, your neighbor's children are around, your friend's children are around, even the toddler around you, living around you. Now, let's, how do we detect the sign of rodent infestation? Yeah. How do we know that they are around the environment in our home? Thank you. Let me, clarif let me clar clarify. Infestation and presence of rodents, two different uh, terminology. Inf at the stage, state of infestation, that we have enormous presence of rats in an environment. Presence of large numbers of rats, different species of rats in an environment. When that is being you know, in place, we we'll refer to it as infestation. Mm. So if you have just one rat in your house, or two rats in your house, or three rats in your house, that is not state of infestation. Okay. as the presence of rats. Mm. So how do you detect mm. that rat is in your house or is in your environment or in your office? Number one, like I said, they are major enemy of man. Mm. They are unwanted guests. They are guests that, you know, came in uninvited. You know, so basically they want to target your food, food substance. Mm. They want to target because rodents, the nature of rodent, rodents ignores you know, the, the teeth of rodent grows every day. Mm. You understand? And it needs to glue that teeth together. Mm. You know, be, that's why you'll be hearing sound. Mm. You know, if you have ever studied the, the rodent, mm. you know, you see, giving, they always give sound. They glue on the teeth. Mm. That's why they need to con constantly glue on any object. Mm. You understand? It could be electrical, uh, uh, insulator, uh, or object, it could be your cabinets, mm. it could be wood, mm. it could be food, mm. you know, so they constantly utilize their presence. So how do you know that rodent is in your product? You can see their physical uh, presence, mm. you can see their droppings, mm. can, they can litter the environment, mm. you know, they can scatter your food, your, mm. your, your unprotected food items, mm. you get it? they can glow on the, the cabinets, particularly mm. the wooden one, mm. they can go on the insulator, the electrical uh, insulator, uh, you know, mm. uh, objects. Mm. So they are enemy, major enemy that causes damage in an environment, mm. major damage mm. Mm. in an environment. Okay. And you can see they are, uh, run, uh, they are we traced. call it run, okay. you know, that, that they are pathway. Mm. You can see they are burrow. Are you getting Please, let's have the pictures of the rats that we have there so that viewers can understand what we are discussing here today. We have some images there, and I would like viewers to get to see those images of those rats. All right. Um, so, okay, now we, we've looked at detecting those signs of rodent infestation. What are the damage, what are the effects they can cause mm. on us as human beings, health-wise? What are the things that they can do to... You know, we have children around us. A lot. Mm. About two years ago, we have outbreak of Lassa fever in uh, some of the African country. You know, this is because there are a presence of rats. And the rats that causes Lassa, you know, fever is called mouse rat. House rat, uh, mouse. Mm. You know, scientific name is Mus musculus of this rat, very small rat, but has ability to damage, you know, economic, has ability to deteriorate health, mm. you know, have capability to kill, mm. you know. So damage caused by rat is enormous. Mm. Economic damage, mm. economic loss, agricultural crops damage, you understand, and health-wise, these rats, you know, they have ability to harbor another organisms mm. 
you know, own their body mechanism. For example, they can harbor mice, they can harbor tick, they can harbor as well what we call flea. Mm. Flea is another organism that you could not see with your naked eyes, mm. you know, that can transmit a disease called leptospirosis. Wow. And this rodent also, if a patient of tuba is someone that has tuberculosis, mm. someone that is suffering of tuberculosis, you know, is an hairborne disease, you know, the person's, you know, released putum. Mm. You understand? You know, and the rodent move around, you understand, maybe penetrate and, you know, in inject that, uh, you know, bacteria and move around your food substance that is not protected. Mm. You know, the sputum of that uh, rodent mm. or the saliva of that rodent, mm. you know, or if the rodent defecates, as human being is being sick, mm. also rodent can be sick. Now, how do you dictate a sick rodent, a carrier, an mm. infectious rodent mm. with, you know, rodent that is healthy? Mm. And that's why adequate uh, cleanliness is essential here. You understand? So the damage cost is enormous. Mm. Economic loss, mm. you know, they can affect our crops, mm. yield. They can also, you know, damage the electric, you know, uh, unprotected electrical yes, please, let, uh, let's appliance. Let's have the images again, please. Can we just have the images of those rats? Uh, some of the images that we have there so that viewers can understand what we're saying. Now, this is black rats. We okay. call this one rat. No, the other one. The other one, the first one yeah. you showed was the black rat. Yes, this is That's... black rat. Okay. Love to live around human beings. Okay. We call, you know, or you call, you call, call them roof rats. Roof rats. Okay. Scientific name is ratus ratus. Hmm. Ratus if ratus. You look at, if you look at the tail of this rat, it's somewhat longer than the body of the rats. Hmm very agile. The, the rat can climb. We call it clampers. Mm. You understand? Mm. They love to climb. Mm. So if your food is in the roof mm. and they perceive, because they are very sensitive. Mm. I'm going to tell you more about the uh, external morphology of this uh, mm. rodent. Mm. You know, so they are very sensitive. You know, they can perceive, mm. you know, odor. Mm. And if there's attractive odor, that food substances are, even if the food is in the ceiling, they will find they their way. Okay, let's have the other image too. Let's have other images too, so that we can also look at those images and discuss more. Okay, this is this one is in the toilet. Yeah. How, how come this rat? Now, that, that, that shows that the sewer line, the sewer pipe mm. that is connected to the inspection chamber okay. from the back of the house, mm. that we have an inspection chamber, mm attached to your septic tank okay. where your sewage or your effluent mm. is being you know stored okay. are you getting it? so if that sewer pipe that's the sewer pipe that leaves from this is the uh uh the, 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 the water system inside mm. now if the sewer pipe is broken mm. or is open mm. if there's traces of open mm. you understand that is not protected they can enter from there even snake Jesus. Can come in from there. Okay, can we have other pictures too? Uh, aside from this, so we it, have other. This rat is coming from outside. This is from, uh, now. This is uh, Norway. This is we call this one. The scientific name is uh, Novengicus. Wow. Ratus Novengicus. So this one is a foreign rat, but okay. it can be imported <laughs> to your country. Really? Yes, yeah, through shipping. Wow. Because wow. ratus, I mean, rats are in the ship. That's a Norway rat, and that you can see the body yeah. is so clean, yeah. so glaring compared to our <laughs> God help, <laughs> God help us. All right, now we've identified these rats, especially the one, the first one that the clip, uh, you know, was. That's shot that's that like. ratus ratus. That's a black rat. That's the black roof rat. rat. How dangerous are these rats to uh, rats to us to our enemy, health? Enemy of man. Mm. Enemy of man, and that's why we, you know, in our in our profession, we don't overlook. A nuisance because what is nuisance? Nuisance are any act or any deed, any behavior of man mm. that could serve as a threat. Mm. Are you getting so that presence of rats is a nuisance? Mm. Whoever is aborting rats, I get such a person is generating nuisance, mm. and you know, such art is a threat to the person's life and uh, his neighborhood. Mm. So, what do we need to do? It is a responsibility of every one of us, not only the government, not only the private sector. Mm -hmm. An individual are towards, you know, be proactive in responding to issue of cleanliness. Mm -hmm. 
cleanliness, and that is the key. You know, you know, this assignment of ours, we, we, we call our assignments under the public health law, you know, as preventive officers. Okay. The medical doctors are into curative. That okay. if adequate attention can be given to preventive, you understand, medicine, okay. you know, you see that people going to hospital, people being you know, heal one way or the other because of negligence, because of lack of uh, good sanitation, lack of good healthy living. I guess so. If people can take good care of their, you know, curative aspect, I mean, preventive aspect of their life mm -hmm. before incidents of disease occur in an environment, there are no traces of overgrown weeds in your apartment, there are no traces of accumulated loads, your environment is not littered, food remnants are being disposed of sanitarily. Mm. You know that if this animal, unwanted animal, comes around to your environment, there is no presence of food there, they will leave your environment. Or one way or the other, your environment is protected. There are no openings. Are you getting you, Your environment is well secure. Your windows is, you know, screened. Okay. With wire gauze, mm. nets. Your door is protected. So by the time this unwanted animal comes around, there is no fruit. Your environment is neat. Mm. Your environment is good. Mm. You understand? They move because they want to survive. Mm. So for a situation whereby they come, particularly these black rats, mm. if it comes to your environment, you have accumulated loads. Are you getting it now? Your, your roof is not, uh, your ceiling is not protected mm. or people that do store food mm. on their roof. Mm. Are you getting it now? So these are means by which they, they penetrate. And there's something we call nest, nest of habitation, that is where they normally live, where they normally rear children. Mm. Are you getting it? Mm. So if you study this rodent, mm. this black rat, the nest to place of a source of food mm. is about 300 meters away. Mm. Are you getting? So if we want to eradicate this, if we want, we can eradicate them, but you can minimize, you can depopulate their, their population. Okay. If you want to depopulate their population now, if I'm to carry out surveillance, now, it is expected of me to study the uh, external morphology of this student. External morphology, how did they feed? Okay. I get it. The number of children they bear or they, 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 they give birth to in a year. Mm. Are you getting it? Huh? Now, uh, what is the lifespan? of this rodent. Mm. These are external morphology that I need to study. study. Mm. Their behavioral attitude mm. I need to study. Mm. They are very active at night. We call it nocturnal uh, uh, habits. Mm. You know, at night you see them very active wow. when people are sleeping. That's and during the day, they went hiding. Mm. I see. Are you getting that? So, but at night, they can cause huge damage to an environment. Mm. So, if I want to either, uh, you know, limit their population and environment, I need to study where is their nest. Okay. Where did they abort? Mm. And their nest is about three, like I said, 300 meters mm -hmm. away from the source of food. So, if the source of food is here, they need to measure 300 feet away mm. to the front, mm. you know, 300 feet away to my left, mm. to my right. Mm. Are you getting in an environment? You understand? So you need to measure this, you know, this, the, 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 the diameter of that environment. Mm -hmm. And also you study, is the environment porous? Okay. Are there presence of overgrown weeds there? Mm. Are there presence of any abandoned building? Mm. Are you getting Because if as soon as they get a place to hide, mm. the source of food may be here, mm. but they've gotten accommodation. So they don't disturb you. They may not live inside your house, but they will come, get food, go back, and sleep. Mm. Wow, so much of information we need to know about these rats, these things that are always moving around in our home. Even when we're sleeping, you keep hearing the whole of your kitchen. So you, you sometimes, you ask yourself, is somebody else again living in this house with me? Well, we're about to find out what are the uh, things that we need to do, prevention, how to solve this rodent um, infestation in our environment, in our home, to help other people around us. We'll go on a quick break, and after that, we'll be right back. Don't go away. Thank you.
it keeps getting better and better. Another opportunity to be blessed by divinely inspired programs on the Dove Television channel has just been made available. You can now download the Dove Television application on your Android phones, iPhones, Blackberry phones, various tablets and iPads. Just visit the appropriate app store depending on your device to download the application which enables you to watch programs and listen to the word of God from anointed men all through the day. Dove Television. On direct to home decoder, on free to air satellite, on mobile internet TV, and now on mobile apps. Dove Television, taking back the power of the air. Welcome back to Healthy Living on Dove Television. We have our guest here with us, Pastor Simindo Stephen, here in the house with us on Healthy Living. And we've been looking at the topic, the rodent, implication of rodent um, infestation. Those rats, what do we have to do? What can we do to keep this rat away from our home? We have, <laughs> we have uh, our phone lines open up for you. So please do call us and be part of it. Hello? Hello, ma'am. Hello, sir. Yes, we can hear you. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Um, my name is Michael. I'm calling from Lagos. All right, Mr. Michael, go ahead with your question. I want to, I want to um, ask you based on how soon it is. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you. The so, reason why you invited some guests here for um, like a record label. Okay, can you call back because you're on to healthy living? Okay, um, when should I call back again? Call back, um, just give us some few uh, minutes, like uh, 30 minutes. Like? Make it 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, please do call us on Healthy Living on Dove Television. Call us and ask us questions pertaining this topic. Uh, we're looking at uh, rodent um, infestation. Get to ask us questions. What are the things that you need to know? How to prevent them from the environment from coming into your house? He has mentioned some few points, the things that we need to do as an individual. Just let's help people around us, help our environment to to grow healthier. Uh, that's what we're trying to do here on this program. All right, we've looked at the, um, the health risk of it when you talked about someone being infected and, you know, so on. So how do we solve this rodent infestation? What can we do to prevent it so that it don't come to our house? We still have some images of some other rats and um, which I want uh, my director over there to please give us those images. Let's look at those ones and see um like this one here this is small rats okay this is more deadly wow this is more deadly more deadly okay and if you look at under the the abdomen of this rat there are patches of white you mm. know this one is you know house mouse okay you know for yoruba uh spoken people they they call it uh ajelojule alone you know very tiny uh, rodent, are you getting her? Mm. And this is what, the one that causes uh, Lassa fever the other time. Okay. Are you getting, you know, you know, so we need to watch out for the damage caused by all this rodent. Mm. Majorly, their presence in your environment should be discouraged. Mm. You know, so whatever you are doing, if, if your environment is so porous, you know, there are openings, the doors, you know, are not screened, your windows is not properly screened, screened. Mm. Your, you just littered your food items in your store, mm. you know, particularly flour food, mm. like grades, should be in a tight, you know, uh, container mm. that will prevent their, you know, penetration. You know, so, house. you know, there's need for cleanliness generally. If there are presence of overgrown weeds around your environment, cut down those overgrown weeds, you know, to the minimum level. Mm -hmm. The there are presence of accumulated loads, ensure that you discard those loads that you are not making use of again. 
this, did they discard those uh, accumulated uh, items around you? Waste should not be present around the envir your environment because as soon as they see heaps of waste, they want to come and eat. Mm. You understand? So these are little things that we need to do uh, that, 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 that start to prevent their presence mm. in your environment. Uh, it, it has to be a regular exercise, not limited to an individual. And that's where we, we, we the, 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 the environmentalists, comes in. Okay. The issue of uh, pest control generally is an area that is essential for any environment that you know want to be sustained. There's need for pest presence to be you know reduced. There's need for fumigation, there's need for general disinfestation mm. of the environment. Mm. Public health law says, I mean WHO says mm. that your residential environments, mm. particularly residential environment where various activities are encouraged, you know, the invasion of all these unwanted animals, not only rodent, all these unwanted animals, mosquito is there. Your environment should be disinfected thrice in a year. Okay. Where we have, you know, restaurants, eateries, your environment should be disinfected once in a month. Mm. Particularly rat control, we call it deratization. Rats has to be deratized once in every month mm. so that their population will be reduced. You may not be able to eradicate them, but you can reduce their population mm. and the damage they may want to cause in your environment. Mm. But mm. situation whereby this is not being, you know, you know, carried out, it is called that the environment will be porous and okay. people will we'll be have prone a to attack. Of, oh, oh. Hello? Yes, can you please mute the volume on your TV set? Okay. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from. My name is Ojilomi. I'm calling you from Letter State. All right, go ahead with your question. Thank you. Okay, my question is, uh, using of uh, poison for rodents, is it safe or secure for a resident? Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Using of uh, poison, it all depends on who is applying it. Mm. You know, it's just like you given a medicine in your in the prescription by the medical doctor. You know, there will be means by which you have to utilize it. The same way goes to uh, rodenticide. There are rodenticide that you need to apply to knock down those rodent, but it has to be handled by a professional. Someone that know the measurement, someone that know that this is how to apply it, mm. and when to pack away those uh, uh, we call it baits, mm. you know that have been what position for this uh, uh, animals or wanted animals. So it's not just to be given to any hard person; it has to be handled and applied by uh, a skilled and trained person. Mm, mm. I'm sure um, Pastor Simindu has answered your question, applied by someone that has the skill to do that, not just any how person. All right, we lost that call there, but, but please do call us and ask us um, questions. Uh, we see them every day in our environment. Even when we walk during the day, you still see rats and that's, everywhere. And that's why we're going to, prevention is different from controlling. Oh, and so I we'll see. see discuss about the control measure. Okay. Uh, hello? Yes, you're on to healthy living. Please go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from. My name is Sylvester. I'm from Warren. All right, Sylvester, go ahead with your question. Thank you. Uh, well, you're not the one that said this to me. I'm calling you. I'm today. Okay, I think what you're trying to do is to listen to your voice. We've said hello to you, and we've asked you to go ahead and tell us what you want to ask our guest here in the studio. Please, when you call us, mute your volume. We can hear our voice from the background. There's a bit of delay uh, to transmission. Just mute it and speak with us directly. God bless you as you do so. Hello? Hello, Hello sir. Thank you so much. Go ahead, sir. Your name and where you're calling from. Um, my name is Samuel. I'm calling from Kaduna. All right, Samuel. Go ahead to your question. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, uh, Thank you for the, for the program. I want to know how do you handle the rats in the ceiling? Ceiling? Okay, that's the roof. All right, thank you so much. How do you handle that? No, no, no. The, 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 it depends on where you are living 
and the kind of residence. Number one, report to the appropriate quarter and engage a licensed pest manager, pest control manager. That's my advice. But let me give you a simple uh, control measure now. There is a chemical or rodent, uh, rodenticide chemical called phosphocin. You can apply phosphocin directly on those ceiling with baits, means with food substance like you know smoke fish. You know, but ensure that no one is within the house, you know, for two days during this exercise. You know, seal up the environment. You know, you can throw those uh, baits on the ceiling through the manhole. You know, leave there for two days. Number one, within three hours of application, because of the, you know, absence of ventilation, you know, the chemical will knock down uh, the, 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 these unwanted animals and cut off their intestine, particularly if they've eaten part of this bait. Mm. And within three hours, they die. You know, so all what you just need to do, and that's why I said the involvement of pest control manager is key because there's what we call pre-control during and after. Mm. Pre is before application. You first of all look at it. I need to close all the windows. I need to close all the door. All the openings has to be blocked to guide against others from gaining access and to prevent the one that is within the uh, residential from being escaped. So there's there, there's pre as a as a size and during. You know. Uh, it has to be applied by uh, a skilled person. The person has to protect himself uh, using PPE, personal protective equipment, mm. you know, and uh, apply. And after, you know, after two days, they have to cross-check the dead one, pick the dead one, and bury the dead one sanitarily. All right. Hello? Hello, good morning. Yes, sir. Well, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from. My name is James, calling from Delta State. All right, Mr. James, go ahead, sir. There are some people living in the environment that there is bush. They went into a farm and they make their living there. So what can they do? You know, they live where the rats are living. So what can they do to protect those rats? All right, thank you, Mr. James. That's a good question. No, no, number one, someone living closer to a bushy environment. Now, we've said it, you create a barrier within your residence. Even if they come around to penetrate, if they cannot assess your residence, they go back. Hmm. So ensure that your windows is properly screened, your door is uh, screened to prevent their you know, entry, and ensure that there is no presence of accumulated load around your residence. Those are you know, death. yes. So and ensure that source of food is not there. You know, so if they come around to your residence area and there's no means of getting you know, entrance, they go back. Mm. and ensure that you do general uh, control measure, uh, disinfestation once in mm. every three months for residential area and for eatery or uh, restaurant now, once in every, one month, uh, every month. All right, we lost that call. Please do send us... Uh... Okay, can rats um, beat honey from camp? Can rats... I don't yeah, I think he wants to say bites just a bit. Yes, absolutely. Rats can bite. There are rats that, 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 that bites mm. and infects human beings. This one that causes a uh, uh, Lassa fever that Lassa I just fever, mentioned, yeah. they, they have ability to, to bite. Mm. And if, particularly if it's an infectious one. You know, as human beings you know, used to be sick, rats can be sick. Rats can be a carrier mm. of disease. They have ability to infect human beings mm. with deadly disease. I've mentioned one, leptospirosis is there, caused by infectious uh, rats. Okay. Are you getting that? Mm. We, we talk about Lassa. Mm. You know, Lassa is, is also uh, a disease caused by rats, particularly the small rats. Mm. You know, rats also can infect someone with tuberculosis mm. if rats penetrate to an environment that is not healthy particularly where we nurse sick people in the mm. hospital. Mm. Are you getting the rats penetrate to sputum mm. you understand, or urine of a sick person and move to your residence? It can infect your water that is not protected, your food that is not protected. 
your green side is not protected. Mm -hmm. you know? That's the, the, the danger of having this uh, kind of rats. You can see yes, that. Yes, in, your, of yeah, this, to you your, in your residence. Okay. All right. We lost that um, call there. Please do call us back. Hello? 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 Yeah. All right. Um, you're home to healthy living. All right. We lost that call there. Please call us back and ask us your uh, question. You said something before uh, we picked um, our call, uh, the call that came in. You said um, the prevention is different from... Control mayor. Control mayor. Yeah. Okay. So control is that, okay, they are, they are, they are. Prevention is that before they come in. Okay. I get what mm. I need to do. Okay. But control is that you have seen them. Mm. You understand? They are in your environment. Them. That's, that's How different. How do you control them? So number one, control is that they are in your environment. They gain, it, they gain access to your environment because your environment is porous. Mm. So first of all, access is my door, is my window. There are places of openings on my window, nets. I get you repair. Mm. I get is my door broken. Mm. You check your sewer pipe. Mm. You check your septic tank, mm. sewer line that, you know, you know, connect your sewage to your septic tank, you know, from the inspection chamber. Is there any open? You look at the... Uh, the the, 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 the the environment generally, is mm. there any presence of uh, accumulated loads you know, that I need to discard or use items that I need to discard mm. away? So these are preventive measures mm. to guide against reoccurrence. I get, but control is that they are already there. Mm. You want to control them. Mm. So and that's where the fumigants comes in, general okay. fumigation mm. by someone that is a... Uh, Sadu with that responsibility, a trained and a licensed person that can undo chemical, okay. you know. All right, we'll have a call. Hello? Hello, good morning. Thank you for calling. Go ahead with your question. Your name, please. My, my name is Emmanuel. All right, Emmanuel, go ahead with your question. Yes, well, I, um, I've been watching your program. I think it's very, very educating. Thank you. God, God bless you. Amen. Yeah, uh, mm, the question I want to ask is this, I believe uh, that uh, for everything God has created, there is, um, there is a reason and purpose for it. Mm. You know, we've been talking about these rodents, of course, they, they can be very, very dangerous. Mm. Can you please ask your guest if there, if there is any reason or if there is any good thing about these rodents? Like, why are they in the environment? What <laughs> are their purposes to? Mm. I just want to, I just want to know. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> now, 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 all that God had created, the Bible says that they were all perfect. Mm. Now, but more importantly, when the environment is porous, for example, someone that is sick, and you know all these animals, they, they live free life. Mm. So by the time they, 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 they move to an environment that is not healthy, you understand, they infect an healthy environment. I guess so we are not saying what God has created is not good or we are condemning the handwork of God. But what we are saying is that, you know, there's need for you to protect your environment, to guide against, you know, disease or being sick. Mm. <laughs> it's the Lord. Hello? Hello. Yes, thank you for calling. Please go ahead and ask your question. All right. Um, your name, please. My name is Daramola. All right. Go ahead with your question, Daramola. Uh, I want to ask, what is the best, what is the best, what is the best method of, of that management? Okay. The what? The best method for okay. uh, rats. That's what he said. The Man, best method. Okay. Yes. Now, the best method, <laughs> I mean, the best thing should be it should be either the same page with me. <laughs> so now the, the best method is what we call uh, trapping. Trapping, uh, if you have just few numbers of uh, rats within your residence, you can use trap. You can set trap for such rats, you know, and uh, with a bait. And also there's what we call uh, uh, baiting. Mm. And you apply baits around, and there are some chemicals that can knock them down. Okay. Like I've mentioned about the phos phosphorus. There's a chemical called phosphorus that you can't, you can't. It's just like a tablet. You can throw down, and uh, if they inhale, 
the chemical without the presence of uh, uh, ventilation around, you know, it can knock them down. So the best control measure to my brother is uh, what I call comprehensive. Because if you control ordinary rats, mm. there is presence of flea, they are sputum, they are dropping, is in your environment. And all this sputum, their urine, mm. carries other pathogenic organisms. Mm. So there's need for you to clean up your entire environment. So after cleaning this organism, corpus, there are other organisms, smaller organisms that you may not be able to see with your naked eyes. Mm. And that's why there's need for you to use a fumigant. Mm. So. All right, we have a question. How can we prevent rodent infestation on our poultry farm? This one's talking mm. about poultry. You have yeah. poultry around you and you yeah. want to prevent this. What can you do? Prevent rat, am I right? Yes. Uh, okay. Now, there's, there's need for you to... Uh, do what I call trapping at poultry, and also there are some there are some uh, extraction of uh, fumigants that is environmental friendly that you can apply. You know, so there will be need for the person asking this question mm. to consult uh, a pest manager, you know, pest control manager. Okay, so you can also So the call. best method, they need to follow for study your environment, mm. they look at the porosity of your, of your environment, they look at the best method to be applied. All right, good day. My name is Olushola Omotosha from Oshun State. Please, what are the chemicals to use to scare reptile, snake, lizard hmm. from your environment? Yeah, you can use uh, phosphocin. Phosphocin is one of the, it has a zinc uh, a class of... Uh, ingredients okay. but first to see because of the acidic nature of the chemical it has to be handled by someone that is licensed to do that so all these people asking this question i will uh i will encourage you and advise you that you consult as someone saddled with such responsibility if you are closer to the health uh, institute around you either your local government you can move the to your local government, ask for any of the environmentalists there. I believe the best method will be given to because I can't say you should just go to market, get uh, a chemical. No, 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 no. I will not encourage you to do that. Ensure that you consult someone that is licensed, you know, to carry out such a assignment in an environment. All right. Um, Joshua from Lokoja asked this again. Said when your neighbors are not cooperating. Pest control may not be easy. <laughs> God help you. Yeah, that's, what, that, that's why there is law in the land. Hmm. There's law in the land. Like so I said earlier, nuisance cannot be overlooked hmm. in an environment. Pest, presence of pests in an environment is a nuisance. So we look at it, if you are the one that is generating that nuisance, or if you are, you are the one harboring all this uh, uh, unwanted animal in the environment, there are a lot that needs to tame you, your mm. activities. Mm. All right, there, there's a very big rat living under the ground my house, the size of a rabbit. They clamp uh, the maize plants in my farm to eat the growing cubs. How do we handle this, please? Surveillance. Surveillance. Mm. Surveillance. Mm. And consult a specialist. They will come around, study what something led to that. Because like I said, rats, it depends on the species of that rats. Mm. The, like this uh, ratus ratus, the black rat, the roof rat now. You know, the, the nest of that rat is about 300 feet away mm. from the source of food. Mm. So a specialist just study 300 feet away, you know, uh, succulent, mm. you understand? to measure where are these rats living. Mm, mm. I get their source of food and they can take care of the nest. But if your environment is porous, definitely they will come time without number because mm. they're source of food and they want to eat. They don't have mother, they don't have father. <laughs> they are homeless. They are homeless. <laughs> they need a home to stay. All right, thank you so much for giving us this information. That's what we do here on Healthy Living. We'll try as much as possible to provide information that will help you. Like they say, prevention is better than cure. Yes, always prevent it and make sure your environment is safe for everyone and the little ones growing, playing. You know, children, you mm. can't stop them. They want to play. And their immune system is so low. Yes, very low. Please, let's try as much as possible to help everyone around us. Thank you. We've been with Pastor Simindu Stephen, uh, Head Environmental Health Unit on the Camp Maintenance Department in the Redeemed Christian Church of God Redemption Camp ground here in uh, Moe, Ogun State, Nigeria. Thank you so much for having you on this platform. Uh, 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 we'll uh, round off with a prayer coming from you, sir. Thank you. 
Before I pray, I want to just say to all that the head of one is the head of all. Hmm. See something, say something. Hmm. If you see rats in slogan. the environment, <laughs> ensure that you lodge your complaints hmm. to the appropriate quarter. Father, I want to thank you for thank you. The, uh, uh, grace you have given to us even to hmm. be here this morning. Hmm. Father, please take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, oh God, that all that I have had we pray that you, God, will impart, even share more than what we've spoken in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, oh God, that your hand will rest upon RCCG in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your hands will rest upon our leader, Pastor E.A. Adeboya Mobifolu, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will strengthen them, oh God, you will empower them in Amen. the name of Jesus. We pray for Dove Vision. Father, please continue to work with this organization in the name of Jesus. Amen. Answer all their prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Your children here, the presenter, the engineer, the cameraman. Father, please bless every one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, oh God, that in your kingdom, you count us to, run, to reign with you. Amen. Thank you for hearing us. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Okay. God bless you okay. and keep your home safe too in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See something, say something. That's our slogan on healthy living. Try as much as possible to say it out. Don't keep it. Don't hurt your other people. Don't hurt your neighbors and their children. Please be your brother's keeper and help. A big thank you to the camera crew in the house, my director, MCL, the engineers. God bless you. God bless our nation, Nigeria. God bless Dope Television. God bless the redeemed Christian Church of God. God bless our Father and the Lord. The general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Daddy E. Adeboe, and mother in Israel, Mommy Fulu Adeboe. Have a wonderful day ahead of you. Remember, see something, say something. Don't keep it. Bye.